every craft that we do or art uh, that, that we do or um, uh, uh, creativity uh, th thing that we do involves a system, a system that takes us from A through B to get to C or whatever. And quilt making has a system and lots of mini systems within it. And one of those mini systems is the cutting system. And the cutting system usually involves a rotary cutter, a mat, and a ruler. I am always surprised at how few people know how to use their rulers, what the marks are for, and the fact that they have some great tools on them that they may not know about. So I want to kind of walk you through the, the things on the ruler that you may not have paid attention to yet. Um, first of all, know the width of your ruler. It used to be that our widest long rulers were six inches wide. But a lot of times now we can get them six and a half inches. And that's because so often we're cutting six and a half inch strips or six and a half inch blocks. And so having that extra half inch is important. Unfortunately, if I'm cutting two inch strips and I'm cutting along two inch strips and I'm cutting along two inch strips and all I'm thinking about is that second long line and I pick my ruler up incorrectly and I lay it down and I'm cutting along, all of a sudden I'm cutting one and a half inch strips. So I need to pay attention to which side I'm using that has that half inch increment. As we look at this particular ruler, and I'm going to put this white paper behind it so that you can see those marks better. This ruler is quite nice because it has some information here that tells you a little bit about what's happening with the ruler. And it has this information every once in a while. Um, and it's going in one direction here and then in the other direction here. Um, which is nice, so if I've got the ruler turned around, I've got that information too. Very few rulers have this much information. What we want to know is uh, what all of the little hatch marks mean. We want to understand how to use those. So if we have a pattern that says that something needs to be cut 3 and 3 eighths, we understand where 3 eighths is. And if we have one ruler that shows that 3 8 line better than others, we can select that ruler. In between every inch marking, so this is the one inch, or the half inch, I mean, over here would be an inch away. So in between those two things, we generally have four pieces of information. Oftentimes, the half inch between that inch line is the longest, and then we have quarter inch lines that are a little shorter, and then eighth inch lines that are the shortest. And so if we want to have something that is three and three eighths, the very first thing we need to do is know that we're not going to work off of this side because that has the half inch increment. We're going to come over here and work off this side. And we'll count over three inches, and then one eighth, two eighths, which is the one quarter, three eighths. And that is where we are going to cut. Well, unfortunately, we don't have this additional slash line like we have with the half inch cut and the quarter inch cut. So I'm going to put this ruler here and show you where that 3 eighths is. It's right here. So we have to be able to, we'll put the paper there instead, right here. Visually link this little hatch mark to this hatch mark to this hatch mark and so on. So those are how the one inch increments are broken down into those eighths and because they're eighths there's going to be eight of those segments. So we can cut those three eighths and five eighths and seven eighths increments. It's not hard to do once you get used to it. Other bits of information that we have on our ruler that you may not know are there is a 45 degree mark and a 60 degree mark. Those are really important if we're cutting unusual angles. And we can cut a 45 degree. So if I set my ruler down here, what is that 45 degree going to do for me? It's over here and what am I cutting? Nothing. I actually have to set that 45 degree line on my straight of grain and then I cut across here to get the 45 degree angle or I set it here on the 60 degree line and get a 60 degree angle or is it a 60 degree angle or is it a 30 degree angle because on one side it's 60 degree and on the other side it's 
30 degree. But these are angle marks that you can use when you're cutting for, especially you're doing um, uh, mitered corners for the borders of your quilts. So it's important to have those lines and know those lines. But one of my favorite lines is this particular line right here on a square ruler. And all square rulers have them, and that is the diagonal line. And it's a very helpful line, not so much in the cutting, but in the finding. So if I find the corner of my ruler, and I'm trying to measure something, and I'm trying to square something up, instead of having to count here, I simply find the eight. So instead of having to count this way and this way to find the eight inch square, I simply find the eight here along that diagonal line and know that there's my eight inch square. It's a very valuable tool that most people never utilize and all square rulers have it. So get to know your ruler and understand how you can use it so that you can make all those unusual cuts that have the eighth inch or the 45 degree angle or make squaring up even easier by utilizing that center diagonal line.